Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Veterinary Small Talks. Today we are going to see the bleeding disorders in pets. We'll start with the basics of coagulation issues encountered in pet practice, how to diagnose it. We'll also see a demo of how to do a PT and APTG test. I hope you find this useful at some point of your clinical practice. So, welcome once again to the Veterinary Small Talks. Bleeding disorders are very important in pet practice, especially from an emergency and critical care point of view. And so, it is crucial to recognize the potential for a coagulation disorder through history and physical examination findings and pursue appropriate diagnostic tests. Basically, there are two types of bleeding disorders in a clinical setting. Well, we know that the primary hemostasis is done with the help of platelets. So, when there is a small cut or injury, or even a micro, micro aberration in a blood vessel, what happens is primarily called as a primary hemostasis. That means the formation of a tiny and mostly a weak and fragile platelet plug at the site of bleeding. So when there is a capillary that is bleeding, there is vasoconstriction at the site of bleeding. Platelets are attracted to the site there is platelet adhesion, activation and aggregation. So in short, the platelets form the basis of initial stoppage of the bleeding. So whenever there is a thrombocytopenia or decrease in the number of platelets, it can cause problems in primary hemostasis. So we know that the normal count of platelet would be above 1.8 lakhs in pet animals. And the count falls below 50,000 there can be spontaneous bleeding and blood transfusion might be necessary. Tons of factors can cause thrombocytopenia as you can see. Of course there is immune mediated thrombocytopenia then there are infections like ehrlichiosis, leishmaniasis, cytozoonosis, Babesia canis, Babesia gibsoni which we get a lot of cases in India, feline panleukopenia, of course canine parvovirus, CDF, ELV, FIV, FIP, mycoplasma, hemophilus. Then there are bacterial infections like leptospirosis. Also there are sequestration and non-availability issues of platelets that can occur in splenomegaly, hemorrhage, disseminated intravascular coagulation, sepsis, vasculitis. And there are some anti-cancer drugs as you can see, doxorubicin, methotrexate and so on. The physical examination findings can vary. In thrombocytopenic disorders, it is usually petechial or echimosis or even epistaxis, that is blood through the nostrils. There can be blood in urine, blood in vomitus, or in short, the level of bleeding is a capillary level of bleeding. So we get all these issues in primary hemostasis, whereas in secondary bleeding disorders or secondary hemostatic disorders, uh, what we get is a huge accumulation of blood. So as an example of a secondary hemostatic disorder that we are going to discuss will be um, a rodenticide poisoning or even a viper bite or poisoning with bradyfocum. So what happens is there is a huge accumulation of blood. There are hematomas, there are hemoabdomens, there are blood in the pleural cavity which can cause dyspnea. So the signs and symptoms of primary and secondary hemostatic disorders can be really variable. To diagnose the bleeding disorders, we have CBC to check the thrombocytopenia. We have the buccal mucosal bleeding time also to check the primary bleeding disorder and the thrombocyte count. Then we have two important tests called PT and APTT which helps us to diagnose the secondary bleeding disorders and uh, in the next slide we are going to see how to do this two test. So there is a very useful apparatus called the IDX Coag DX. The process is very simple. Uh, we collect the blood in the sodium citrate vial here we call it the blue capped vial. We have two specific cartridges for the PT and APTT it is specifically written the citrate PT and the citrate APTT cartridge when uh, the machine is turned on it will ask to insert the cartridge so 
we take the cartridge and we can see the end showing a depression a circular depression where we have to put uh, the blood first we load the cartridge into the machine there is a small process of warming up after about 10 to 20 seconds it is ready to be filled with the blood when the warming up process is over we take the we take the sodium citrate vial and Using a tiny filler, we take about this much of blood, load two or three drops of blood in the circular depression so as to create a convex surface and press the start button. You can clearly appreciate the convex drop. When you press the start button, we can see that the machine sucks in the blood and then we just have to wait for the result. So the normal uh, APTT value in canine blood is between 71 to 102 and uh, the PT value is around 12 to 17. So we consider a result abnormal when uh, the value that we get is more than 25% of the high normal value. So here is the protocol. First we test the APTT. If it is prolonged, uh, we understand that there is a defect in the intrinsic or the common pathway. Then we test the PT. If the PT is prolonged, we identify that the defect is in the common pathway so the possible causes of that coagulopathy is rodenticide poisoning snake bite dic hepatopathy systemic lupus erythromatosis methimazole therapy vitamin k deficiency and factor 1 2 5 10 and 12 deficiency if the pt is normal it means that the intrinsic pathway defect is there which means that there is either hemophilia A or hemophilia B and if the APTG test is showing normal we again test PT if that PT is prolonged we identify that the pathway uh, defect is with the extrinsic pathway so one common thing is early rod rodenticide toxicity also we have factor 7 deficiency in beagles Alaskan Malamutes and DSH domestic short hair cats and if the PT is normal we identify that there is no secondary hemostatic defect. So that's the end of this video hope you find this useful at some point of your clinical practice. Thank you and bye bye.